I'm Mark Seifter. And I'm Linda Zeiss Palmer. And this is Arcane Mark. Hello, everybody, and welcome to Build an NPC Workshop 3, the second Build an NPC Workshop. It's actually Build an NPC Workshop 3, second Build an NPC Workshop. You're right. Without a the. Second without a the. But I said the the last time we were saying no, it. No, we're introducing <laughs> confusion to our confusing Whoa, title. no, our confusing title is so not confusing. So today we're going to build an NPC with, um, once again, with help from everyone in the Twitch audience who will be making the decisions for this NPC. And this NPC might show up in upcoming episode, Workshop Arena Battle of Velda Monster and NPC Workshops, but not if it's vastly inappropriately leveled for for such a mm -hmm. battle of, of creatures. So I am getting my handy Workshop, Arcade Mark Workshop document workshop up, where talk. I save the products of all of our creations and then post them after the fact on our Discord, tiny.cc slash arcane mark. That's and right. And I will be doing the same thing. By the way, um, I think I figured out a way during the time that I did it, but one, and it was just me, to do it faster when vote counting, which is that if we compose the, um, or not vote counting, or I guess vote counting and also putting in the ideas for votes, mm -hmm. if we compose it in the, in the message to the chat, then it's possible that we'll be able to read the chats as we're writing it rather than have to go back and forth on it. I don't oh. know how much time that saves. Um, I would also need to open Twitch on here to oh, do that. Oh, good point. So we can't do that. All right, never mind. Never it's mind. Possible. We probably have to go through the whole rigmarole of getting it to recognize this computer. Yeah, game. no, let's not do that. Okay, so <laughs> with that idea out of the way... We can, we can try that next time. We will uh, have to start, as we do with any NPC or monster or almost anything, we need a concept for this NPC. You can't just start putting stats down onto a page. You need to know, like, what what is the concept and role of the NPC? And we need to consider, like, what's the role in the game? And what what is the role in the story? And... Between those, we can figure out uh, what we're going to do with this NPC. Thanks for subscribing. Thanks for I saw a question, what level is appropriate? Uh, whatever level folks decide is appropriate. Oh, but That's... I think they mean what is appropriate enough to be included in, um, in the battle. We're not going to be able to include everything in the battle anyway, so just pick whatever you want. But obviously, if it's incredibly high level... That's yeah, going to be different see, than the ones our, our we've created. Before, um, we've had a third level. Or we've had as low six as level. We've had some six levels and ten, six, six, ten is what I'm seeing in here. And then I think she was nine. Have we had actually a third level? I uh, know we didn't. I, I okay. said three, but it, it looks like six, six, nine, ten is what we've built so far. Wait, what about that that plant that I built last time? That was like level fourteen. That was fourteen or thirteen or something. Uh, and we have another nine here. Between the NPCs and that, so it's yeah. all it, it, a lot of it is in that range. So if you go like, uh, if you go all the way down to like level zero or negative one, that's probably too low for uh, the arena. And if it's super high, then there's not much that's in that But race. it doesn't have to be arena appropriate. Yeah, it doesn't that's have to be. Want. Not everything is going to... I mean, we're not going to do an arena with, like, everything. We're going to pick some fun matchups and throw them together. So we have a first concept, Adventure Captain. Yeah, so put out your concepts and we will vote for them as usual. Adventure Captain is an interesting one and in that it's easy to combine with other concepts. Steven from Roll for Combat asks about the grapple, uh, the grapple action and the grabbed condition. You can check the grapple action, um, uh, whether or not everybody gains the grab condition, um, or only the creature who is grabbed gains the grab condition in Pathfinder Second Edition. According to the grapple action, the creature who is grabbed gains the um, gains the grab condition. Yeah, that's pretty much what it seems Unless to say. Unless you critically failed, that is. 
Keep, but that describes yes. what. But oh, that yes. describes more clearly what happens. Keeping there. in mind that if you if you move away, like it ends the grab condition. So it's not that you're actually grabbed in spirit in the space. It's that there is another reason you don't want to move, which is that you lose your condition. We have another concept here. Um, Steno Ruins Explorer. It's a Steno Ruins Explorer. Steno Ruins Explorer. A fighter wizard um, who retired as a fighter and then started learning wizard stuff and becoming a scholar for the fighter Pathfinder wizard. Society. Who tired as a fighter and then all right there is came scholar slash wizard to promote society goals. Mm-hmm. Uh, not goats. Goals. Not goats. <laughs> then there is a an NPC that is an amorphous blob of statistics. Amorphous blob of statistics. Uh, someone who is removing swords from the field of 10,000 swords in Numeria. Someone who is removing swords from the field. Or maybe plane of 10,000 swords. Plane uh, there's a of correction on that. 10,000 swords in Numeria. Joe Jungers asks, what is this, Theno? It is a creature that has been announced for Bestiary 3 as, like, a Medusa-esque, but um, low-level, ancestry-ready type creature that nothing else is known of. So if, we, if we're supposed to be making that, then we're going to have to do it with literally zero information. Which you know can be kind of awkward for me since I have actual information. So it will it will require you guys to come up with more and Linda who does yes. not have any information to come up with more than usual if we did that. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, Gorgon esque. In fact, the name Stino is one of the three Gorgons was long, uh, along with Uriely and um, and Medusa. Well, the uh, the classical Greek Gorgon overall, rather than like that one obscure source with the Gorgon that was a bull that, that it all got started from. Alright. So, any other ideas before we put the ideas to... We've got the... five ideas so far. Yep. Let's see, is there a sixth idea out there for an even six? Then we could roll a d6. If uh, people uh, are indecisive, uh, uh, yes, we uh, could. Alright. Now, it looks like those five ideas are the ones that we have out there. So, if that being the case, let's uh, have people pick one. Uh, one of the five. I think five is a small enough number for to just pick your, pick your favorite of these five possible NPC ideas. Of which I kind of agree with Rico that his idea of an amorphous blob is really more of a Build-A-Monster Workshop. <laughs> if that wins, we'll probably transition this over to Build-A-Monster Workshop type stuff. Well, what we said, There's we were still an NPC. NPC. So it'll be an NPC that's more amorphous in his traits. All right. So what have so we got far, so far? Th the three people who proposed number two, four, and five have each voted for their own. And those are the only votes. We've got a two, a four, and a five. Mm-hmm. And a one. And a one. And a two. All right. One, two, four, five. All right, you know it's one two two four five. One two two four five. So two is in the lead mm -hmm. by because it's the only one that's received a repeat vote. Alrighty, do we have any other preferences? We actually had a number of votes equal to the number of ideas, and the creator of idea number three has not voted yet. Mm -hmm. uh, Elf Tro picks five. All right, so we have a current tie between Steno Bruins Explorer and someone who is removing swords from the plane of 10,000 swords in Numeria. That's right, although calling it that when it's two to two to one to one to zero 
really just anybody can <laughs> anybody can shift this. Yep. Uh yeah, I agree, Rico. Mm hmm. Uh that's what we're here we for. All right, uh, Zapdos came well. in and he did vote for his for his own. After all, so that um, now it's one one. There's three ones, two twos. All right, so um, yeah, I guess we're doing a uh, a, a Steno Ruins Explorer who is removing the swords for the plane of ten thousand swords in Numeria. So exploring Numerian ruins. And removing swords from the ten from the plane of ten thousand swords in Numeria. Yes. So, are you like, gonna look up what's been said about Sino? I'm gonna look up the plane of ten thousand swords because, like, we were lucky that I knew that was in Numeria. All right. So, not everyone may know this, including me. All of these facts, but it is a haunted site of a bitter conflict from centuries past. That I knew. Where a bunch of Kelid swords are jutting out and are cursed in different ways by the spirits of warriors slain in the pointless war. Okay. So far, so good. What's, what are the details on this? So, apparently, there's a giant battle between two chieftains and there's a wary draw. The warlords remaining warriors turned on their leaders as they died. The chieftains cursed everyone on the battlefield to be eternally bound to it until the foolish conflict is resolved. Curse impaled everybody on the plane with their own sword, including those still alive. The soul owner's souls are bound within the hilts that remain above the ground. Three Shoki cycle punks to dispatch the site couldn't deliver the fallen souls to the boneyard, and the curse is so powerful, any mortal who dies on the plane in the more than 1,200 years hence has also been bound to its curse. The spirit inside each of the plane's 10,000 swords attempts to curse and possess any mortal who touches it, binding them to the field until the task is accomplished. Spirit's pain and rage is proportional to the sword's power. With the blade of Rathka's spite blade, the first warrior to betray her chieftain, storing the most sorrow and strength. A cult of Xyphus, god of pointless death, venerates the sites for its pointless violence and subversion of the bound soul's path. So, that is me reading, um, paraphrasing Pathfinder Wiki uh, about what's going on with the 10,000 swords. Right. So, so, so this person's got a lot going on. So, yeah, apparently this is a, um, uh, a Steno Ruin Explorer overall, who is also removing swords from the Plane of 10,000 Swords in Numeria, which is obviously very risky based on yes. that. Um... So they're probably pretty high And level. not just because Risky is the one who came up with the Steno Ruins <laughs> And they Explorer, also probably but... have some kind of a cursed ability that, that has to do with, like, the fact that they have this curse from removing the weapon from the, the field, that their soul is bound to it in some way. I mean, uh, unless they have a way to uh, resist the curse, mm -hmm. for example. Like, maybe they were raised by Tengu and learned the art of jinx eating um, or something like that. Because <laughs> it's not just has removed a sword. It's been removing swords. Swords, so it makes, that's true. While, while the backstory wasn't specified, it makes me think that um, this Theno you know, has a way to not get horribly cursed for each sword or at least remove it because otherwise they got from sword one to sword yeah, two that, that's right, before that's it right. became swords. And, and I true. feel like if I was horribly cursed, I couldn't get rid of it. I probably wouldn't be like, let's go back yeah. and get another different curse. <laughs> yeah, David says, or or break the curse. Yeah. yeah. Right. Or, like, it's, it seems that they each have unique unfinished business that they try to force you to do. So they could also be kind of like a medium who's acting out the different unfinished businesses on purpose to try to get the souls to move on. So and maybe so in Servant to Phrasma or one of the psychopomps. Wait, what's the name of that psychopomp who is just, like completely lazy and their worshippers have to do the usher and their worshippers have to do everything that's like one of my favorite psycho pop ushers let's see if i can is find it, is it, passage? Is it barzak i think it is yeah yeah barzak who's just like yeah i don't i i'm not gonna do my my yeah. stuff I, I hope my worshippers are dutiful enough to take care of it so so maybe maybe they have like two abilities of that i'm just like preemptively or uh, for uh for placeholder names called Curse Resistance and, um, Rico's, and Sword Rico Rico is going with the Mr. Burns strategy of just 
get so many different curses that they all cancel each other out. <laughs> Rizzi says Medusa pulled a snake tactic and left her own egg in a tengu nest. Baby Steno did not eat baby tango and is happily adopted by the tengu who loved their scaly burb child. <laughs> <laughs> Alright. So I'm gonna let Linda somewhat take charge of where we go with this because she doesn't know anything about Steno. Okay. So, Other than what we've actually actively revealed, which is all that we've said so far. So, they are somewhat based on Medusa. They've been announced to be, like, very low level and therefore, like, ancestry ready, even though they do not have an ancestry. Yeah. Um, Medusa kin. Uh, so, let's see. So, petrif full-on petrification is pretty darn powerful. Um... But I could see, like, I could see this, like, the the biting snake reaction being a thing that this NPC might have. Mm-hmm. Where they can, they can lash out with their snakes at adjacent creatures. And they may have, like, a, a poison that is weaker than the, um, than the poison of the, uh, than the, than the poison of the full-on Medusa. All right, so uh, so these are some ideas that Linda had for the the Steno part of it. I'll still I'll still like ask about some of the math things that we have to decide. So um, we want to build this um, this Theno ruins explorer who is also removing swords from um, the planet Ten Thousand Swords. I, I feel like whatever else we say, their will save should be good. What class <laughs> roadmap should we follow? Or none. They don't have to follow a class roadmap, right? They don't have to be PC-based. They could just actually be a curse, um, sort of a curse-shirking medium ruins explorer. So should they just be their own bespoke thing or should they follow a particular class roadmap? What do people think? We have all the power to do what we want. And just give unique abilities if we want or follow a class roadmap. Adam Generator is saying it may, might be more their own thing. Okay. Mm -hmm. That actually makes it easier um, than following a class roadmap because we could just put whatever we want. Yeah, people are... All right. Two people have said their own thing and I love hasty generalizations. So All right. um, it's risky to do so, but I think it will be accurate in this point, especially since one of the people, again, was risky who but said it's... that. So, right. um, let's do, um, just our own thing where this character just has bespoke abilities. That means we don't have a roadmap, so we get to sort of make our own, it, it, it's easier, but it does mean we get more decision points. So, um, first of all, we're making our own thing. We don't mm -hmm. have a class to worry about. So, like, what kind, uh, actually, what level are we, we're looking at now? Yeah. So... Obviously, this character is high enough level that they're either high enough level that they can deal with the, the Curses of the Swords in some way, or they're just somehow, like uh, Rico's saying, just piling up all these curses that are on them and somehow s surviving. Like, kind of like uh, like Yoon surviving the ridiculous stuff. Yeah, but uh, she had it removed no, at least. No, she, she did have it removed. She had some a, friends. Yeah. All right, so what levels? Oh, two people are saying Lucky 7. Mm -hmm. Oh, wow, it's the same two people. Hasty Generalization again. Oh, what? what uh, Rex Lucas said 13. It's two for Unlucky. Uh, mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm not going to be able to just take the average this time, though, because it actually means something that, that they're level 7 or 13. <laughs> mm -hmm. Seventh level certainly is close to the levels of some of the other things we made if they wanted to be in the arena. Yeah, Adam Generator, that's actually how I did um, some of the other ones uh, where I added, I would have added up like, oh, 27 divided by 3 is 9. Yeah. Because that is the arithmetic mean of the three options that people pick. Yeah. But I think that it matters that it, it actually still is a lucky number. And three people said 7. So we got three sevens. So the slot machine comes on 777. Seven, seven, and we're going to do 7. All right. We are All right. level 7. We are level 7. Okay. So. We're going to be our own bespoke thing. That means mm -hmm. that we actually can just kind of 
go where we please, but we should at least think about the fact of, like, are we, like, mainly relying on, uh, like, big physical strength? Um, are, are we, we like are we dexterous Desi? and nimble or are we some kind of like mental ability score is our big thing? Whatever it is, it's going to be fine, but we should just, we don't have a roadmap telling us which ability scores to put up. So we should try to think about which ability scores we're going to put up. How do we fight? How do we fight? Uh, and once we have a picture of that, like people were talking about, well, they could fight with, um, they could fight like with the swords that they're gathering once mm -hmm. they remove the curses. Joe Everyone and, says yeah, high, high will. will. So we know we're gonna have high will. I went ahead and popped that in yeah, there. Yeah, that's that. That's definitely clear. Maybe a high will. Well, high will, despite having a fairly low wisdom, says Rags mm -hmm. the Liquid. Just so they have it. like some sort of like a magical protection that bolsters their will. Yeah, or just like a sort of a pseudo proficiency that is very high mm -hmm. that we can put in there. Maybe the Stino is just really lucky. <laughs> I could see that. But uh, since we're standing this Stino out as a full mm -hmm. NPC, we know it's not just a background character, that they are not just someone the PCs are going to talk to, but someone that might fight mm -hmm. either as an ally to the PCs or an enemy that we might need in an encounter. So when they do get into that encounter... What is their thing going to be? I mean, it feels like, to me, like they're going to be doing something with those swords that they um, yeah. that they have on them rather than just, like, blasting fireballs and just, oh, yeah, I have these swords, but so, whatever. So they're probably going to be either, a, either, like, a strength fighter or a dex fighter, depending upon what kinds of swords they That's true, they but up. the field of 10,000 swords is Kellids, so it feels like, to, to me, that even if there's a few of them that mm -hmm. are finessable, that they're mostly going to be... Swords that like you know like Kelly barbarians and warriors had yeah. that are not finesse, long sword or heavier. So that that gives me the idea that if they were going to use them in their hands, they might use strength. But uh, Risky points out that it could have some kind of occult telekinetic thing where they like have the swords spinning out in the air. I think that that Mike wrote like a monk feat for mm -hmm. advanced players guide that was something like that that we could use as a. Um, as a starting point where it's just like there's like a web of weapons out in the air that you could attack people with from a distance sort of magically and going using our magic stuff. So we could definitely... Um, Do you remember what level that was, roughly? I'll find it. I, I'm close to it here. It's one of these uh, one of these higher level ones. We don't... Uh, I think it's Whirling Blade Stance. Yes. You make additional strength with your monk weapons. Just They're just flying around through the air, and you just keep moving them around. So mm -hmm. we can definitely do something like that if that makes more sense. Um, so what do people think? I think I've talked myself out of finesse on the grounds that um, it just doesn't seem... That seems reasonable. It doesn't so then, seem so like maybe, that they would be able to pick up those particular swords and be able to finesse. So then maybe them. the idea is that they have is that they have good strength and they can attack people with the blade, but they also have like some like less damaging ability to telekinetically toss the blades about to give them some range as well. Yeah, it just depends on how we picture it. Are they? Uh, uh, is this character like up front and center with that sword? Are they in the back and the big swords are moving around in the distance and you want to try to close? And I can also see that too if it's like if it if it's like they don't want to have the swords too close to them all the time, so they're more or less surrounded by this aura of swords, and that's part and of how Rico they keep says the maybe back. like the curse that brings the sword back is part of why the swords like kind of return because they're oh cursed. yeah they're returning because of the curse. <laughs> I like that. All right, so it looks like. Um, Yeah, it looks like um, at least more people are talking about uh, the idea of that they're in the back a bit mm -hmm. and they're moving around these swords magically or even throwing them from a distance on purpose and uh, letting the curse bring them back. Mm -hmm. But the, whatever it is, it's that, that when you're fighting against this Ruins Explorer that you're dealing with really like floating and flying swords and swords that are that are moving around at you from a distance um and linda you had said mm -hmm. something about like snake um a snake hair potentially is a melee option as well and so 
if that's true, it would make sense as a dichotomy of like, yeah, I don't really fight that well with these swords when I'm mm-hmm. not doing the weird um, sword distance yeah. thing, even though I have all of them, um, but I have a hair backup. Yeah, well, I was looking at that for the perspective of a reaction because it seems like a it seems like a um, an extra attack bite reaction is something that we could pick an amount of damage that it would be properly balanced. Whereas the whereas petrification is and slowing is going to be a lot harder to, <laughs> to to balance at a particular level point with everything else going on in the, in the creature. All right. Well, I mean, I guess if Medusa is a seventh level creature, and so is this. But then we need to be if we want this if we want this person to have extra abilities, which like we totally do, then we probably wouldn't be able to give them like the the central Medusa ability. Plus that I, I'm guessing that since it's an ancestry, that if that exists, it would have to be like a much higher level feat. I mean, this is just you and the chat coming up with an mm-hmm. idea for this, not an, even an ancestry yet. Anyway, just this critter that. Will not have to be anything similar oh, to an no, I, I mean, I know, but I'm just, <laughs> I'm just speculating based on, based on general thoughts on balance in the game and not having seen this thing at all. Okay, fair <laughs> enough. So, uh, we are looking at an NPC, which means that instead of using the monster ability scores um, that are on there, we might want to also make sure mm-hmm. to use ability scores that work for PCs. Now, if we do that, though, it's going to give us a lot less leeway to get the numbers where we're looking for. Um, what we want to, like, say, for example, uh, make the will save really high despite the lower wisdom. But we'll figure it out. And we don't necessarily have to care if this is, like, up to publishable standards mm-hmm. of um, of the abilities look, th- I things worry looking about close that to each much. other. I just would probably figure that we don't want the stats right. to be, like, too egregious overall. That's right. So, um, let's, so we know wisdom is not that high, despite the will say being high. So are we more intelligence or wisdom when it comes to, uh, I'm not wisdom, intelligence or charisma. charisma, Yeah, when it comes to mental. Are we like charisma? Is that what we we, like power of our force of will and personality, um, beats back the curses or is it more like I've studied very many things. And um, my knowledge is what does this. So, so, so far, we've actually we got a split so far. One charisma and one int. People have been sort of mostly together on the other stuff. Because I could see both of these. And so, because um, I was thinking, I was like, which one is, is obvious? And there's not an obvious one. Wither King says there should be some con. Well, there should be some con. Mm-hmm. Um, but this is specifically the question of what mental ability score do they do they primarily do they primarily use? All right. All right. More sage charisma. And that was my first yeah. gut instinct. But then the sort of like, I did get some occultisty vibes like Rex Liquid did. And it's mm-hmm. like, maybe in. So maybe. All right. So let's give plus four um, for charisma. So maybe int is kind of medium level and then wisdom is low. Yep. And since we're using an NPC, we have to, our medium level is lower than it would be for a yeah. monster. So we can give um, four charisma. Uh, and uh, we can put four on probably one, one other thing and have it be okay mm-hmm. at this level. But um, let's also think about picture this character. What does this character wear? Uh, is this character in like a breastplate or chain mail or heavier armor? Or is this character wearing more like uh, people were talking about wizards? Is this character more of... Um, in robes or clothing or some other thing. Um, we should figure that out because we don't have a class roadmap. And so that will help us to determine uh, mm-hmm. what we want to do with dexterity. And what we need to do is, what we want to do is strength, right? Yep. Because I guess right. strength is going to be, so if they're throwing the weapons around with their, with their magic, with their magic abilities, is that a charisma based attack? I think so. It, 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 roughly, we can just say that. Well, roughly, yeah. I mean, obviously, yeah, it's, uh, not, it's not actually based on any ability score. Yeah, it's but an like, NPC. yes, but sort of like uh, when we're assuming, like, what we're when we're generally trying to come up with, what would it be roughly based on? Like, is there? A we can just generally them? assume that like charisma is getting involved and that it's like a quasi spellish mm-hmm. type thing that's going on. Sounds good. So they don't necessarily need super high oh. strength. The amount of strength they have is probably based on what armor. All right. So the real question is, are we like hide armor? 
Um, uh, or scale mail, which some people have been saying with further scales. Are we like super light leathery um, for the for that kind of people are talking about like crafted out of like animal parts. Mm-hmm. And Zatha says full plate. So um, it scales. looks like some people have been saying scales. I guess it was Rico multiple times, um, but Risky did say further scales. Uh, Rex Lucas says scales and scales. Okay, okay so, so we're going to do like scale we're, now. It sounds like we're scales, so we, right. want, we want to have enough strength to... So, yeah, we want to have enough strength that we could feel like if this was a real uh, PC, that the PC would be like, oh, yeah, that's a good amount of strength. So we can give them a so plus two strength because so that can hold the scale mail just fine. Yeah. So they could have, for example, a plus two strength and a plus two dex. And that's and that's enough to hold the scale mail without being encumbered and in any way and to also or that would be with the check penalty and also to max out the dex cap on that. That's right. So that's it would people be. People said to here. have a lot of con, so we can give plus four con and plus three int. Mm-hmm. And then what does that leave us for wisdom? What does that leave us for wisdom? Well, people said low, so zero. <laughs> right? Yeah, there we go. All so right, so we got our that, ability, we got our ability scores what, what in place. What do we have here? We've got two, two, four, three, zero, four. So that's yeah. So you know that's like a little, a little height, but, but it, no single ability score is higher than a PC would have. Mm -hmm. So then, in that case, um, so Great. we've got a, we're good at will. We and know we're going to be good at will. We're well, probably going to be pretty good at fork because our con is high. So I guess reflex is probably going to be our worst. So yeah, let's let let's take a look at that. So um, we're probably going to be good at. We know we're good at will. High for will is eighteen. So with our zero wisdom, it's going to be real. It's going to be real hard to get mm -hmm. that high without it looking pretty weird that it goes from zero wisdom all the way up to um, to eighteen. We could probably go to like sixteen, which is a little above moderate. Mm -hmm. I think that's that's not too too wild, but eighteen just feels a yeah. little bit a little bit high because of the zero wisdom. Uh, that's still a really solid will save, though. That's quite good considering <laughs> zero wisdom. Uh, mm -hmm. a, a PC with zero wisdom is not gonna be able to get that. So then, what do we want for fort and reflex? Okay, so we know we have plus four for fort mm -hmm. as well. So, um, that would probably be... So, we, yeah, we get 11 just from con plus yes. level without any proficiency. And we, since we were off parity odds and evens already on the other one, we can we can do that too. Mm -hmm. So, let's be it even because cause the other one, right, was 7 and then we put it up to 16. Yeah. So, this one's 11. Let's put it to even. Mm -hmm. It's So, it's got to be at least 14. That would just be, like, trained at level 7. Yeah. So, I don't feel like that's enough. So, maybe 16. Maybe it's... Pretty good at for fortitude and well, all the things you need to like go through this field constantly yeah. looking for swords. So then our but reflex lower is on be reflex. Our lower one. So that would be somewhere like that would be like twelve or fourteen. Yeah. Maybe fourteen because um, it's just all sort of circling around moderate. Mm -hmm. Sounds good. So That's it doesn't sort of have like, any that are like completely over high, but yeah. It's sort of like it's an expert at fortitude and reflex with very, very good mm -hmm. con. And it's like legendarily good at will with very, very bad yes. wisdom. <laughs> uh, Rissy was talking about, like, potentially a lower save, but, like, bonuses versus poison and petrification and curses and things like that. Oh, yeah, we could th definitely at least curses, right? We can throw mm -hmm. that on, like, a, um, like, a plus two circumstance bonus against curses or, or any amount of poison or petrification if you want to throw that on as well. So that's saving throws. Now, we need to show the result of this mm -hmm. low wisdom somewhere, or else yes. we're just claiming they're low, and that's probably going to be in perception. Yes. So, obviously, they are clearly an explorer. They're mm -hmm. going around doing perception and surviving in this land, so they're going to have them, but yes. it doesn't necessarily mean they're going to be great at it. Mm -hmm. so, so, if they were if they were an expert at it, then they would I have mean, they, 11. They could be a master, though, mm -hmm. like, legitimately. Like, yeah. they, they could not have been a legendary at will say, but we just did it anyway. Mm -hmm. So, we could give, uh, for example... We could give 13, 13 and then be between just a little bit of better than low. Yeah. For example, to perception. Um, and then um, we need to pick some skills mm -hmm. as well. So we know that this character knows about 
knows some things about like curses and stuff. They're probably going to have occultism, crafting to know about, um, like the craftsmanship of swords and other weird Numerian stuff that might be Yeah, and people mentioned crafting. occultism earlier. Yeah, so they did. Sure. I saw, I so saw it multiple have, we've times. Got, we've got crafting and occultism. What other skills do we they have? They probably need survival to be wandering around this weird field. Yeah, probably. So we have crafting, occultism, and survival. And other than that, I think their backstory doesn't force any mm -hmm. other skills, but we still may want to take a look at, say, some charisma skills for the fact that they have such high charisma. Uh, like it might, they might as well have, um, maybe diplomacy. They might as well have like, yeah, maybe diplomacy. They're a ruin explorer. part of how they, part of how they've managed to negotiate with these spirits. They might also have thievery because like the, oh, they're a ruin explorer overall, mm -hmm. but this field isn't the only place they go to and they may need to disarm traps every and, once in uh, a while. And specifically for, and specifically there's a suggestion to have a lore that's related to Kellid curses in some way. Some kind of lore that helps I think that for... that's a little specific, but we could give them curse, curse lore. lore? Yeah. Yes. Where the king says lore swords. So, I mean, they could have warfare lore, but we don't need to... We probably shouldn't give them, like, too many lores. <laughs> and cursed lore seems very on the very nose. Very fitting. So um, let's, let's keep the cursed lore. Okay. We've also got a curse resistance ability that bonus against curses that folks mentioned before. That's right. They might have intimidation also, given mm -hmm. that, like, curses are a thing that inherently leads itself to, in, to intimidating people. Sounds good. Okay. And there was also another mention of performance to, to do dancing. Uh, performance for sword dancing. Could do that. Yeah. All right. So there we go. Now we need to decide which ones are going to be their high skills and which ones will be their um, moderate and low skills. Mm -hmm. uh, so most creatures have at least one high skill, but no more than three. And um, so we should figure that out. So, right. the ones we talked about first, crafting, um, occultism, and survival, probably are the ones that at least they're relatively high with, but survival's yeah. off of a much worse ability score than that. It's three lower. So, let's say that maybe that's moderate. So, um... Around the moderate level, and then, uh, maybe curse lore is also high? Oh, yeah. That's true. If it's a lore, it doesn't necessarily have to count against it that much, but sure. Yeah. So, let's say those three int-based ones are 17... That's mm -hmm. the high. And that um, survival has somehow managed to get up to 15, even though the... Or let's do 14. Yeah. Let, even though it's it's almost low and it's below moderate, just so it's three lower than the int-based ones. Makes sense. Just and kind then, of feels better. Uh, and then for... What about the, the, diplomacy, the, intimidation. What are they better at so those in we, we we can't put it below 13. Yeah. All of these things we've been doing just preference, but we, we literally can't ha say that mm -hmm. it's lower than what it's tr what the trained about yeah, is. Yeah, no, that makes sense. So it's got to be above at least thirteen. So maybe one of them's thirteen, one of them's fifteen. Um, there are three of them. Oh right, yes. So which one of diplomacy, intimidation, and performance is highest? And Joe suggests possibly uh, possibly deception as well. Uh, what do people think? Between diplomacy, intimidation, and performance, for which one might be one that's one of the, that's their moderate skill. What do you think, Linda? There are no preferences in the chat so far. Which one feels more um, like that's the one that's a little better? I guess you said diplomacy first. Yeah, Whiskey but says then performance, you talked about um, and Rex Lucas yeah. says intimidation. I, I think intimidation, honestly. Okay. Though, once you started talking sure. about curses, and okay, we'll do it then. Fifteen intimidation, thirteen the other ones. Does that did that fill in all of the skills? Uh, thievery, we still. Have. Oh, thievery, great. Okay, so we know that that's got to be at least um, it's got to be at least eleven, which is mm -hmm. the low end of low. Uh, we could give that thirteen also. Yeah, that sounds good because then that's just that's that's sort of in a pattern with all the other skills yep, too. Yep. Yep. So they've got a lot of skills. They do, mm -hmm. and they're pretty good at, at them overall. They've got well, a lot of them are in the low, but they're at the upper end of low. Yeah. All right. Cool. Um. So. Uh, items. So this is a unique NPC. That mm -hmm. means that we have leeway to break the safe items <laughs> guidelines, which we're going to do because we're just, we bespokely have some number of cursed swords. Yes. Let's see. How many cursed swords should they have? What about seven? The same as like, try to get some luck by having stolen seven cursed swords. <laughs> 
Yeah, I like that. Seven cursed swords. All right. All right. So we've got seven cursed swords. They've got seven cursed swords. But that's mostly just flavor that they have seven cursed swords. I don't mm -hmm. think we're going to, like, put different... Completely abilities different on abilities on each of forever. the seven cursed swords. It would the also point break is design that they have seven for cursed just swords. Generally having a monster V two complicated. Yeah, that is that's a lot. So um, for AC, uh, we've got height armor. Mm -hmm. So the minimum we're going to have. Oh, sorry, scale scale armor. We've got scale armor. So the minimum we're going to have is uh, is twenty four um, with scale armor. Mm -hmm. um, that is if we are uh, basically basing it off of not being magic scale armor. Mm -hmm. And it would be 25 if it was magic scale armor. That's sort of like... And they're two levels higher than the magic scale armor and are a unique NPC. So, like, it could make sense for them to have magic scale armor. It's not it's not out of um, the question. A, a non-unique person would need to be level 9 to get it. Yeah. Because that's when... The GM can just say, hey, you just fought 32 level 9 monsters who each have plus 1 armor and not throw off the, the treasure value of their encounter. So, yeah, we can get we can give this NPC a plus 1 version of that scale armor. And that would mean 25 AC. Scores. All right, so we got 25 AC. All right, so this is more of a Castian-ish character and probably has not actually, does not actually keep the full moderate hit points because of that, mm -hmm. right? We said backline Castian-ish. Yeah, they do have pretty high con, but... They do have pretty high con, though. That's a good point. If they were in, like, the, like, explorer-ish, like, bard-ish realm of hit points, mm -hmm. then we, we, we really can't go much lower than, um, let's see, 12 times 7, which is 84 plus, like... Some amount for an ancestry. So we really can't go all the way down to low. That's mm -hmm. too low. But we can do something that's like in between moderate and low. Yeah, that makes sense. Like 92, for example, um, or 99. Which one do you like? 99 is in the, like, the toughness-ish realm with mm -hmm. all that high. Um, uh, con and 92 is like with their, less With their AC there. being high and their saves being fairly good. Yeah, their I think AC that... is um, listed at the high AC, which is the normal mm -hmm. AC for most combatant creatures. However, yeah. they are a little casty-ish. Mm -hmm. So either way, they're going to be below moderate hit points. Yeah. Uh, what do folks in the chat think? Let's see. Folks in the chat are saying... Uh, Maybe there's a greater version of this NPC. I think Wither King may have come in later. Um, and just talking about monsters. Um, chromatic wall effects. A higher effects. level version of this, uh, of this NPC with chromatic wall effects. Where each of the swords seven. has a, different, a mm -hmm. different theme of that. I mean, we could also use the chromatic wall um, D7 or D8 table as a theming and be like well one of the cursed swords is flaming and one of them mm -hmm. and, and they they have each of the elements for the chromatic wall um for example uh all right so i'm not really seeing much here um uh, let's go with what do you think 92 yeah 92 okay sounds good to me let's go with 92 probably don't have any resistances or weaknesses yeah other than the resistance to curses specifically yes which is not a resistance yes but, but to be clear yes it is not a resistance, it is a bonus on saves. It is a bonus on saves, that's true. Alright, so speed. I don't see a compelling reason for it not to be 25 feet. Mm -hmm. Right? Uh, do you? I do not. Okay, because they're in scale, but they have enough strength to move at full speed in scale. Unless they had like, fleet or something like that. <laughs> Alright, um, so we've got regular speed. Regular so what does the chromatic wall have in it? What does chromatic wall have? It just has all the things you expect from a prismatic wall, just that you only do one of those colors. Um, so let's take a look at strikes because that is going to be where we get in this like floaty sword thing. So we've got strikes. And so the strikes that we... So, Linda, were you planning on giving a, like, a snake's strike or a snake's reaction or a reaction that uses a strike? Or well, what were whatever, you doing? Well, whatever the Medusa does. Let's see. It looks like the Medusa one is triggers the snake fang strike. Okay. So then, yeah, melee. So it would, uh, this person, also, um, uh, 
We should come up with like a name and uh, possibly a gender for this character. Mm -hmm. So we can stop calling them this person and they constantly. Uh, this person would have a Snake Fang Strike. They would have a Cursed Sword melee strike, but it's probably not that good. And then they would have like a... Uh, Uh, like a haunted sword range strike. Yeah. So if we base it off of this, agile and finesse were the traits that the Medusa snake fang has. Not that they necessarily care about agile, but. In fact, it's an NPC, so I mean, agile they might care about, but it's an NPC, so you cannot you, you cannot add finesse because ours doesn't have a higher dex. Yes. Or is it um, actually, so then... I guess they're equal, so you could add finesse if you wanted to say this one should be based off dex, but it's a little... It's bizarre, I just won't put it in there. It's a little iffy with that, because like if you get clumsy, and mm -hmm. you have exactly equal strength and dex, you, what the monster should have, but it would make it too complicated, is the ability to choose, okay, it is based on dex when I'm enfeebled, and it's based on strength when mm -hmm. I'm clumsy, so that I, yeah. never, I never get a penalty. If and you see I, what I, I mean. feel like... Um... You know, she might have enough writers going on with all of her... I, I, the Ris Risky said female. Yeah, Risky um, said female, and Wither King said that for a name, Crest. Mm-hmm. Oh, I have an idea for the Cursed Swords, though. Instead of doing the charismatic thing... Uh, there should be curses that yeah. are in the Game Master Guide. So, it could be that, like, the Cursed Sword attempts to put, like, one of these random curses. Yeah, and if it's putting curses, yeah, we probably don't need poison on the uh, on the Snake Fang Strike. It can well, be that wouldn't put one. curses. But... Yeah, no, I know, but so we don't have, like, multiple Oh, yeah, they could be non-venomous snakes if you want. Either way. Um... What do you guys think about uh, ongoing effects, like... Poisons and curses and all that, all those other stuff. Uh, Joe was simultaneously talking about putting some curses upon the targets. So, let's pick seven curses that are level seven or lower from the Curses mm -hmm. from Game Mastery Guide. So... There are eight curses. So pick one of these curses not to have on a sword. Grave curse, where the person who gets hit by the curse is hounded by undead creatures of the same level every night, attempting a flat check to see if undead come to attack them. Um, second curse, curse of nightmares, where it requires 12 hours of sleep to avoid becoming fatigued because of horrible nightmares. Theft of thought, where they begin to lose their memories. Um, it's usually a curse that protects a book. Though Slayer's Haunt, where they think uh, all creatures around them are those that they have slain, still bearing their wounds. That seems like it's one that we definitely should have for these swords. Mm -hmm. Coward's Roots, where their courage has been stolen from their heart and they become, uh, if they're frightened, they become immobilized or fleeing. Curse of the Ravenous, where they just have to eat and eat and eat. Um, Wizard's Ward, also usually put on a book that deals... Um, damage when you damage the book. Actually, that one is obviously the one we can't use for yeah. this. So, uh, so, what was it? Yeah, so, so we just don't do Wizard's Word. So, mm -hmm. it's basically the seven swords have all all seven of the non-Wizard's Word curses that are level seven or lower in the Game Mastery Guide. The last one is Oath of the Flesh. At each time you make a promise to someone, a symbol of the promise is carved into your flesh and you take damage. Almost like we planned it that way, but we totally didn't. All right. So there we go. So in terms of the application of these curses, is this only when they make that ranged haunted attack or when it is in any time that they hit, they try to curse you? Um, or if they critically hit, they try to curse you? It's Maybe it's on... I, I don't know. So the question is... Normally, like, if the if the item has a curse, like, it shouldn't be that easy to promulgate the curse onto all of your mm -hmm. opponents from a flavor perspective. But from a mechanics perspective, if it's something that is this complicated that only happens on a crit, that means it's it's likely to of, not happen. Yeah. 
So then maybe it does happen on every hit, but the DC isn't too bad. Maybe it's an action to stoke up the curse. Oh, yeah. And then on your next strike, that it does one of the random curses. What do you think? Sounds good. That way it's not like, uh, it, it's very intentional. It's like, yeah, I'm going to curse you. A lot of these don't even do anything right now. They do it like later at a point where it won't help the um, crest or whatever uh, whatever her name is in the fight to curse them. Some of them would, but not all. Like Coward's Roots would be great. It, and because uh, our Stino friend has uh, intimidation. So can like intimidate someone and then they become immobilized or fleeing. Mm -hmm. Uh so the main thing is that we have this haunted sword um, ranged attack that is better, and it probably like since they're like independently floating around, um, but they come back from the curse, it can just be treated as a ranged attack. Like Rico was saying, it can be just pretty similar to just throwing it. So if we we're going to say that, um, so let's go with only moderate attack bonus on the snakes and yeah. and the melee sword attack. So that's plus 16. Uh, but high attack bonus on the... Uh, which is sort of similar to saying that it uses so charisma instead of the other ones. So this isn't quite a D8 on... though. What do we do about that? What isn't quite a D8? Uh, we have a D7 going on here with the randomness. Um, Because there's seven... Yeah, but there's, there's seven, seven swords. swords. Um, uh, on a roll of eight, she picks which curse. Yeah. She gets to pick the curse, whereas normally she slash crest, the yeah. only name that's been proposed, um, does not pick the curse. Um, all right. So that would be 18 attack bonus with the haunted mm -hmm. sword, uh, 16 attack bonus with the, um, with the others. Yep. All right. So, Linda, you were talking about possibly giving the snakes even as, like, a reaction um, in some way. So, they probably, like, have a particularly low amount of damage. We can mm -hmm. go with 2d6 plus 6, the, the standard good. low amount of damage, if you want. Um, and then you can come up with whatever reaction you're going to do. Um, yeah, well, I was just figuring that then it could use the um, it could use the biting snakes reaction right. from, the, from the Medusa. That makes sense. So, the melee attack... Could be 2d8 plus 8 with the swords if we want to go like long sword as like the sort of your standard for the sword. Uh, that's moderate damage. Mm -hmm. And then we can give maybe a little bit of extra for when it's when it's haunted and thrown. Maybe 2d8 plus 10. That's almost high damage, but not quite because it's ranged. It's a one and what is the range on curse. these guys? What is a range, the range on them? That's a good question. So people were saying before, like, not sniper range, but mm -hmm. pretty far back. So it could have a, um, a range increment that's higher than a thrown weapon, but is not all the way up to a full range increment. So, so like, like 50, yeah, 40? Yeah. I was thinking around 40, but 50 may just be easier math because it's it's easy to divide by 50 for the penalty. Mm -hmm. I could see that. Oh, Rico says maybe on a roll of 8, the curse affects... Uh, Curse effects crest slash her instead of the opponent. I, I like then that. Then you have to figure out which which one. Um, again, so you have to roll again, and you might get eight again. I like both of these options, so I'm just going to do what I do sometimes and say is just put an or in the stab lock for whoever runs it to choose which one they like better. All right. They can choose whether they want to be nice to her or, or mean mm -hmm. to her. Okay. So, um, you can figure out how you want to do that re that snake-based reaction. I that already, seems I like it, uh, you already put it in. Yeah, yeah, that seems like that's part of the Stino part of it, which I'm not going to touch. Yeah. I okay. Um, so, I think that, that um, the other question is, does she have some spells? Oh, another, actually, there is another. She's What's the DC abilities? of the will save to resist the curses? Oh, well, it's probably pretty good. Um, because these are some pretty nasty curses that she has here. We also want her to at least have some chance to fail despite all of her bonuses against curses. So let's, maybe she even has extreme on the curses because it's like, these are ridiculous curses. Why mm -hmm. is she doing this? 
That would be a 29. Yeah. What is her will bonus on curses? Um, 16. So I guess curse is 18. All right. So she has a 50-50. Yeah. If she gets hit by it in the version where she gets hit by her own thing. Mm-hmm. 29 is just like, you're very likely to get cursed. So if we do give her spells, they should not be this high. Yes. Like, this is just because, like, wow, this spell, this is mm-hmm. a powerful curse. So, uh, Joe says, if they are spells, they should probably be based on charisma. I agree with that. Mm-hmm. Um, the question is just more, should she have some, like, occult spells in there? Um, and they don't have to be, like, exactly a sorcerer or a bard's progression. They can just be a few ones that we like, like, remove curse and mm-hmm. um, some low-level curse spells, for example. If yeah, we wanted if to. Were, do you, do you, what do you guys think? Do you think we should give but her... It's possible that, like, the sword thing is... Yeah. Ma- I'm like, we may just have completed she, she's, it. She's already got a lot. She's got a lot of things. I could also see... I could also see a benefit to giving her... To giving her some spells to sort of... To sort of flush things out. What do you guys think? Yeah. And Joe says maybe a few divinations, too. So, do people want to see her with a few spells, or think that that she's pretty set? Because we didn't create a roadmap, so we're just we're sort of blazing our own trail. It means we we can do whatever we want. Uh, Wither King says at least a remove curse is good, and we can just give her an innate spell, innate occult remove curse, and nothing else, and it'll be fine if we do that. We don't have to go down a rabbit hole just to mm-hmm. get remove curse. We just say like innate occult. Occur- Spells, remove curse, fourth level. That's the level that she could have. Mm-hmm. Um, and then we're set. All right. So, is so there... Joe thinks some spells would round her out. Mm-hmm. I can see that perspective. Uh, does anybody else have any opinions on um, on, on whether like specifically or not specifically which spells would be yeah other spells whether or not to add spells, spells and then spells. what kind of spells. What does everybody think? We're definitely at least putting in Remove Curse. So mm-hmm. we that's been set in stone. And but not it's... in the Medusa way. <laughs> Risky said she could potentially have rituals or some uh, at least some rituals. That's true. There mm-hmm. aren't a huge number that are available at her level. Risky says telekinetic projectile. I was thinking that, but I think her bespoke strike is good enough. That it may wind up being better than telekinetic. Let's see, actually. A telekinetic projectile would do. Um, it would be 4d4 plus 4. Yeah. So that is. And her and her strike hold is. On, that's that's 14. I think her range strike does yeah, more than that. Yeah, it's 2d8 plus 10. Her range strike does more than the projectile would for fewer actions. So I think that her cooler, better telekinetic mm-hmm. projectile has, has obviated the need for the spell version of it. Let's see if there are any rituals that are low enough level that she could learn them without a problem. So obviously she can't take the the best area only ones that are only for monsters. Um, because she's not those types of monsters. She is an NPC, so she could take them. Mm-hmm. But she's not a devil or a daemon or an angel or a, a demon. Um, so she could have... Like, object animation to try to make animated swords. I mean, those don't currently exist, but mm-hmm. someday they boy. Um, create undead. Uh, heart bond. Um, inveigle. Consecrate. Uh, Gius. Reincarnate. Unseen custodians. Atone. Blight. Plant growth. Rest eternal. <laughs> or simulacrum. What What are you laughing at? Rest eternal. You call upon god spirits and stranger beings to bar a creature spirit from ever returning. Yeah, I mean, she might have rest eternal because she's yeah trying to put these spirits to their rest. Right? Yeah, I, I was laughing because it's actually really fitting. Yeah. Uh, and let's see. Uh, talking about divinations, I was talking about object reading. That's true. So why don't we just put in a cult? Um, let's see. So it is, or it's just rituals. You don't put occult rituals. Yeah. It's rest eternal. Now, if she has rest eternal, we need to give her a religion. And that's yeah. fine. She's not going to be great at it. She's though. not going to be. Well, this is part of her problem. So give her religion, and since it has to be at least expert, let's give her a religion of plus twelve. Mhm. All right. So, uh, what was that with about uh, about? Uh, so giving her rest eternal, uh, and um, 
Risky says maybe unseen custodians to make a site bound unseen servant situation. Uh, that is occultism, so she could just cast it flat okay. out. All right. Sure, once we've done rituals, we can just do that. We've got remove curse, and then... Um, uh, Wither King says also animate objects. So we can do that. That is actually Arcana. So we'll have to give her expert Arcana uh, as well. So maybe we shouldn't because we yeah, have to give her Arcana is, at that is, point. Her skills are getting pretty. And it would have to be it. expert. Uh, so... Or we can also take away Rest Eternal and remove Religion and go for an animate object. We can decide on that. Uh, but sh why don't we give her... Um, object reading to go with Joe and, and yeah, Rest yeah. of his thing I, as, I a, as, a, in there. as an innate spell. And it, What level is that guy? And is it just named object reading this time around? Um, yes, it is. It's a first level spell. And it can be heightened to fourth. Be heightened to fourth. Yes. As well. Wait. No, wait, no that wait, was the, was that was the AP, the APG version is, uh, is weirdly not doesn't have all the things in it. Uh, but it says applicable time frame. It may not right, be... Nethys just may have a yeah. little glitch there. Mm -hmm. um, but, yes, it can be heightened up to fourth, so we can just do that. It, yeah. Obviously, knowing about the object within the last year is vastly not enough time to know about these swords from the 10,000 swords, but... It still could be useful. All right, so she's got an Anita called Spells, and she's got some Rituals as well. All right. Uh, Brexit says Rest Eternal is better than Animate Object. All right, there we have it. Mm -hmm. I think we've figured this out. So is this character named Crest because of one suggestion, uh, or do we have other ideas uh, that we also like for the name? Because I'm certainly okay with taking it if people like that name. I think the name will put the... Mm -hmm. Oh, and, and alignment. Wait, I forgot about yeah. that. That was at the beginning. What do folks think about the name alignment and alignment and name? Chaotic evil. I mean, if no one has a preference, we can, always good. we can always determine it by dice. If they do worship that late Barzak, yeah. the lazy psychopomp, right, that like, would have to be to put... somewhere close to neutral. Yeah. But that was just a random thing. Linda Crest. True neutral. Lofia. Chaotic neutral. Crest of the Swords. Chaotic neutral. Lawful neutral. So right. we could go with Lofia, Crest of the Swords, who could go by either Lofia or Crest. All right, we have true neutral, true neutral, chaotic neutral, lawful neutral, lawful neutral. All right, so it looks like everything cancels out to true neutral. Joe wonders if we have some idea why she's doing this. We're not really sure, although we know she's a ruined explorer. Um, there's been some proposals that she worships Psycho Pop Ushers and wants to get the spirits to move on. But also some proposals that swords are cool. So we have Lofia, Crest of the Swords, and True Neutral. A True Neutral Stheno Ruins Explorer. Why is she doing this? To assist the cause of... Who has haunted, cursed swords. And there we have it. To assist the cause of psychopomps? Yeah, because Joe, it could be for us. It could be for asthma, or, cool. it, or it could be psychopomp ushers. That's when we were talking about the weird kind of lazy psycho pump usher and there's a lot of ones that aren't barzak the passage barzak the passage is just hilarious uh all right so yes i have at the bottom why is she doing this to assist the cause of psycho top ushers and or phrasma because swords are cool <laughs> if you want to find out you'll need to Get way too close to her accursed sword. Unseen custodian <laughs> moves spirits from hills to elsewhere for therapy to try to get them to 
learn productive skills. That Very makes sense. Armor. Especially if she critically fails. Oh, yeah. Because uh, if she critically fails, then they get angry and attack you with the Unseen Custodian spell. So um, that's that's even more appropriate for trying to get Cursed Spirits out there. Mm -hmm. Critical failure. They, they're hostile, capable of making fist strikes with an attack bonus and dealing force damage. That's pretty awesome. Although they should probably be like little blade strikes, but, you know, you can reflavor those. It's, it's a yeah. thing. <laughs> All right. <laughs> so um, there we have it, folks. I think that that is good. We've completed the character. Shall we say goodbye to YouTube? Yes, let's say goodbye, Bye, YouTube. YouTube. Bye.